So um, I'm going to read from I'm going to read from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 17. I'm going to read the whole chapter. So when we get to the end of the chapter, we'll be done. <laughs> okay. Uh, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on, thir on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the, that the Christ had to suffer and raise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. And some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters and from the marketplace and from a mob and started to riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's home in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials, shouting, these men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They all, they are all defying Caesar's degree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard these things, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil, and they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. So <clears throat> here's Paul in Thessalonica. Now we know, we know that that Paul wrote two letters to to the church in Thessalonica. Uh, we've been actually studying uh, Thessalonica uh, on Wednesday nights about the second coming of Christ and uh, a lot of a lot of really good really good uh, teachings on Wednesdays at the Cultural Center at 530 if anybody would like to come down there uh, <clears throat> but here we are Paul in, Th in Thessalonica preaching in the synagogue now we're going to see as we as we go along he preaches in the synagogue every place that he goes he's a Jewish scholar he's he's in the synagogue preaching Jesus from the uh, from the scriptures now and we'll get to, we'll get to that in a second but he's he's telling the Jewish people and anybody else that will listen, the Greeks and anybody else that was that was there about Jesus and and the resurrection of Christ. And you know, we know that the resurrection of Christ is is uh, a foundation truth that we stand on. Without the resurrection of Christ, we're no different from anybody else. We're no different from any other religion, and we're going to see and and we're going to see about religions uh, coming up later on in the chapter but but uh, Paul's teaching Old Testament this the scriptures we know it is not there it hadn't been written yet we're what Paul was teaching was was Old Testament Jesus Christ had to die had to suffer had to rise from the dead so now says as as soon I'm at verse 10 now as soon as it was night the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea on arriving there they went to the Jewish synagogue now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians for they received the message with great great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true I've, I've always loved that scripture because, because they didn't just receive the word like when somebody stands up here in front of you preaching every Sunday or 
you listen to somebody on TV or you listen to somebody on the radio or however, however you receive the word of God, they, they received it, they received it with readiness of heart and then they searched the scripture daily to see if what they were being told was true or not. Now they're, they're searching, here the Berean church, they're searching the Old Testament scriptures in the synagogue, rolled out a scroll, Here's the, here's the word of God, Old Testament, Torah. And he's showing Jesus, showing forth Jesus in there, in, the, in that scripture. Just the Berean, the Berean believers were, were very cool. But, you know, uh, Then it says, many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. When the Jews in Thessalonica, now we're going back, we're, we're in a different community now, but the, but the, the Jewish, uh, the Jews in Thessalonica that were stirring up trouble because they didn't like what, preach, what Paul was preaching, what he was saying, now here they come. It says the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea. They went there too and agitated the crowds and stirred them up. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed in Berea. The men who escorted Paul brought him to Athens, then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. So he left, he left uh, Silas and Timothy behind in in Thessalonica and now he sent he's sending for him I want you guys to come on we're 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 in Athens now we just we just moved interesting we just moved the ministry we moved now we we we're, we've been in Thessalonica now we've been in Berea now we're in Athens Athens is a Athens is a cool city Athens is known for all of the gods that were there and all of the all of the worshiping that went on in Athens when Paul was waiting for them in Athens he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols oh my gosh full of idols so he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks as well as in the marketplace Day by day, those who happened to be there. So he was all over the city, you know, just in the synagogue. He's, he's in the marketplace. Wherever anybody would gather that he, could, that he could share the word of God with, he took that opportunity to, to do it. A group of uh, Epicureans and Stoics philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them saying, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul, Paul preached the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. And when they took him and brought him to a meeting, excuse me, uh, of the Areopagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears. We wanted to know what they mean. All, and then in parentheses, all the Ath Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Oh boy. Good. I mean, you could do a whole message just on that particular piece of scripture. Because where, what is happening, you know, this, what's happening in the world today is nothing new. Yeah, cause I, 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 there's, there's nothing new under the sun. That what, what, what we're experiencing today in the proliferation of religions and beliefs and uh, all of this uh, philosophical stuff is nothing new, okay? 
and and it was they had a they had a real problem. Athens was a center of um, uh, religious junk, basically. You know, when philosophies and and all of that uh, uh, idols and houses of worship and and all of that, and so. <clears throat> So, uh, where was I at? Okay, so then Paul, Paul's response. Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus, whatever it is, and, and said, Men of Athens, I see that in, in every way you are very religious. Very religious. So, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship and even found an altar with this inscription on it to an unknown God <laughs> to an unknown God I said last week I was gonna I was gonna share this morning about the unknown God well here it is and how how is how what is there's the inscription and the reason that they did that was because they didn't want to miss out if they if if one of the other gods wasn't the wasn't the right god to be following or wasn't the right god to be praying to they put a inscription out for an unknown god so we can pray to him pray to the unknown god we got all of our bases covered <laughs> we got all of our bases covered but paul says now that you worship as something unknown I am going to proclaim to you the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands he's proclaiming who God is he's telling this unknown God that you guys uh, put an inscription to that you want to that you want to pray to I know who that unknown God is here he is he was the maker of heaven and earth. The maker of heaven and earth. Here he is. I got, you know, you want to know who the unknown God is? I'm going to tell you who he is. He's Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gave all men life and breath and everything else for one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and look, I, look he goes right to Genesis Paul goes right to Genesis by one man the whole earth is populated by one man Adam and he determined the time set for them and he ex in that, the exact places where they should live. He did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he's not far from each one of us. See, God is not far. God is right there. Not far from each one of us. And, and now in, in this, this, this is a, the, next, the next scripture. It was put into a song years and years and years and years ago. In him, in him, we live and move and have our being. If I was Arlen, I could sing that to you, but I can't sing. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. Okay, but for in him, we live and move and have our being. As some of our own poets have said, we are his offspring. We're, we're the offspring of God. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone or any image or any image made by man's design and skill. Think about that. Even even what we have, uh, 
what we have today is the rendition of what Jesus looked like what what people thought he looked like People were worshiping images back in the day. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. But now he has commanded all people everywhere to repent, to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice, justice, by the man he has appointed he has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead so Paul is preaching repentance that God God overlooked your ignorance but now we got to stop the ignorant stuff he raised Christ from the dead so that, you, so that you could walk in, in a different life, in a new life. So when, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered and others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. A few men became followers of Paul and believers. Among them was Dionysus, member of the Arapagus and also a woman named Damaris and a number of others. So here we have in, in one chapter in the book of Acts, we have, we have Paul preaching the creation of the world. We have him, we have him telling us that God, that, that the God that I'm preaching the God that I'm sharing with you that unknown God that you that you wrote you made an inscription to that that God is Jesus Christ risen from the dead and you have now you have the opportunity to to believe what I say or not believe and we find we find that some believed some believed and some didn't believe but you know it didn't stop it didn't stop Paul from from preaching it didn't stop Paul from sharing the gospel it didn't stop Paul from writing to the the believers in Thessalonica that heard the word and believed came to Christ changed their lives and now and now Paul sent some letters to instruct them what are you gonna you know what are you gonna do the next chapter of Acts it goes to Corinth you know and we know we have we have letters from Paul to the Corinthian church see Paul traveled Paul traveled all over all over preaching and teaching the resurrection of Christ you know, back to you know, without the resurrection. You know, you look at you look at uh, the religions of the world today. The major religions of the world today, uh, Islam, Muhammad. I believe that he died a couple thousand years ago. There was no resurrection there, sorry. There's only one resurrection. Only one, that's God resurrecting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. All of the rest of these guys, Buddha, huh? uh, all of the other uh, Greek myth, mythological gods that are the that are talked about in books and, and uh, histories and all of those kinds of stuff. Sorry, they're gone. They're dead. Only we serve a risen Savior. Did we, did we sing that this morning? He's in the world today. He walks with me and talks with me. Remember, that's a long life's narrow way. A risen Savior that we serve and that, that we're called, 
We're called to to uh, to share the good news of the resurrection of Christ that lives within us. To share that to share that good news with other people that don't know Him. You know, Paul. Paul is a missionary. We we quote unquote missionary. Paul goes forth and and travels around and uh, you know and I I uh, I heard a a preacher uh, a month or two ago that uh, his name is Alistair Biggs and he's a, he has a he's been a pastor at a church in uh, Ohio for more than 40 years he's He's a young guy. He's like 72, you know. So, anyway, he in one of his messages, in one of his messages that's really, really stuck with me, and it was a, it was about. Uh, he said he said he talked to he talked to a couple guys. He was at a convention or doing something. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing, but he's talking to a couple guys and he asked this. He asked this one guy, he says, what are you, what are you doing? He says, uh, I'm retired. I'm retired. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't think that was much of an answer. And so, so he asked another guy, what about, what about you? Gee. I'm retired. Well, you know, his his response his response was if you're a Christian, there's no such thing as retirement. He said He said, you're either, as you, and it was, it was the end of a message, and it was that people were leaving. He says, he says, as you go out of here, he says, you're either missionary or in the mission field. So, That, that had a, a profound impact on me because, you know, uh, three or four weeks ago when we, when we first got back, Ben asked me what we'd been doing, how, you know, what happened on our way. Well, I didn't share that with him, but, uh, but you know, what, what happened was, was that we travel, Shirley and I travel all over, all over the United States. You know, well, all over the, from here to Florida, United States, the west, you know, the west side and kind of south, we, we travel a lot of places, we, and we've been to a lot of places, and and we're we're going back to Florida this year because we made some friends with some people down there, and 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 I I kind of feel like we have a, a calling to make an impact upon their lives. If we're going to be traveling somewhere, you know, we we should we should be missionaries going into the mission field. Now you think about that. You think about that and you think about you think about what Christ has done for us. Christ Christ died for us. Christ forgive us of our sins. We confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we're saved. So, so we're walking in, an, or should be walking in a newness of life. We're different people. Well, I know that I'm different from what I was when I was growing up. <laughs> Joyce could attest to that. So, uh, but, but we're, 
We're different people and we should, we should act as different people. And when you think about, when you think about if you're a missionary, and I believe, I believe that we're all called to be missionaries. Really, we're in Inchilim, Washington is a mission field. You don't believe me, go outside that door. It's a mission field out there. And we should, we should, we should look at the way that, we're, that we uh, interact with people in the sense that, that God has called me to inch limb for a particular purpose. What is that purpose? To share Jesus Christ with unbelievers. Just like a missionary goes into a different country and what's what's their purpose they're they're there to share jesus christ with unbelievers unbelievers I, I, I dare to say there's a few unbelievers in this community and and i know i know for a fact that that some of you have taken it upon yourselves to evangelize them to be a missionary to them. To, to bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he can do in transforming your life. And sharing that, sharing that gospel message with others that, that we, need to, we need to embrace. I, I, I you know, we've, we, like I said, we've traveled a lot. Have we been missionaries every place we would go? Hardly at all. Hardly any place. Do we need to change the way that we're doing things and the way that we're, the way that we look at things when we travel? Yeah, we do. We do. You know, we, we, uh, in our travels, we went, we spent some time in, uh, in Lawton, Oklahoma, where Shirley and I met. 44 years ago, 45 years ago, because we've been married for 44 years now. Uh, and, and we had a lot of friends there, went to, a, went to a very dynamic, charismatic, early 70s charismatic, woo woo, way out, way out there. A uh, lot of fun though. It was, a, it, was a, it was a great church and, and we were married in that church and we went and uh, we went to a service there. Uh, went to a church in a, out in the country, a country a cowboy church, and and with friends that we were friends with back then, back 50 years ago. 50 years ago, we were friends. The one one guy, that one couple that we went, we went to their house because uh, he's he's uh, prophetically motivated. So his motivational gift was prophecy. And so, so we, and he, he was asked by the pastor of the church that they're going to, which was the original place where we went, if he wouldn't take some of these guys aside to think they're prophets and teach them, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's discerning of spirits and there's things that, the things that prophets, uh, somebody that, that has a motivation, that type of a motivation, needs a little instruction because they can go off the deep end, okay? And, I, and you may have run into people like that. I've run into people like that over the years that, that were prophets, that, that, and they had a prophet, uh, you know, a prophet motivation. They were, that was their, their gift. God had given them the gift of prophecy and to be able to prophesy, prophesy to people, you know. And this guy that, this guy that I'm talking about, his name is Jim Calloway. And Jim, Jim, when he, when, when I first met him back in 70, 1972, he was just on fire, prophetically. And, and he would just, <laughs> we, we laughed about it. Uh, he just blurred out whatever whatever God was sh showing him, you know. Well, we was we was at a meeting one time, and and it was in a house, a little home group, little home group thing, and and uh, he had a word from the Lord, and it was purple. 
And that was it. That was it. He still remembers that. We talked about it. He still remembers that. He says, he didn't, he didn't know the gist of what, what God was. And, and it spoke to somebody. When he said that, it spoke to somebody. That particular word, that's, only, that's all he got from God was just the word purple. But it, but it made a difference in someone's life that was there. That was contemplating something or they were seeking God about something and, or whatever, whatever it was. And he, uh, you think about, think about that and think about you, most of you have experienced prophets. And people that, uh, people that can, people that can speak into your life, you know, and, and, uh, Paul in the writings that we have in, in Acts, he, he was able to speak into the lives of people wherever he went. And, and we should aspire to, to be able to, to speak into the lives of people that we come in contact with. That whatever it is, and, and it, it, it boils down to, to a sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. And, and uh, we should, we should uh, uh, nurture the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. To the point that when the Holy Spirit speak to, speaks to us about somebody... That, that we're able to, to speak into their lives, whatever it is, whatever it is that God, that God has, has uh, given us to share with other people, we should be able to speak that into the heart and life of the people around us as God gives us direction. As God gives us direction, you pray the, uh, and I'll pray in, in a second. Pray, uh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move in our lives. Holy Spirit, show us, give us the words that we need to speak to those that we're in contact with that, that are in need of you, that we can speak the word of life into them. The word of life that sets the captives free, breaks yokes of bondage, brings healing, that we're able to speak that word as, as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, Father. Father, what, for what you're doing in our hearts and lives, Father. For the opportunities that, that you're giving us, Father, to speak into hearts and lives of those around about us, Father. Lord, and, and Father, we, uh, I just pray, Father, our sphere of influence, Father. Those, those people, Father, that are, that are a part of our lives that we have influence over, that we can... That we can uh, uh, share the gospel with Father. We, I pray, Father, for a sensitivity to the Spirit, Father. And I, I pray, Father, for a sensitivity to the Spirit, Father, for, for Joyce and I's sisters, Father. And, and, Father, for our cousins, Father, that are all over this town, Father. Lord, a sensitivity to the Spirit, Father, to be able to reach out and to speak life into them, Father, by the Holy Spirit's utterance, within us at the time and the place, Father, that you want them to come into the kingdom of God, Father, because we believe, Father, we believe, Father, in the salvation, Father, of our relatives, Father, of our families, Father, of those, Father, that, that live in this community, Father, we're related to, Father. We believe in their salvation, Father. We believe, Father, that you're going to bring revival to the reservation, Father. We believe that you're going to bring revival to, to inch and limb, Father. And Lord, we pray, Father, that we're a part of what you're going to be doing here, Father. 
We pray, Father, for the, for the uh, next worship time that we have coming up in June, Father. The one in July, the one in August, Father. Lord, for opportunities, Father, to, to see salvation come to those in this community, Father, that we've been praying for, Father, some for years, Father. But we can see, Father, your hand moving in our midst, Father, bringing about deliverance, Father, bringing about setting the captive free, Father, bringing about breaking yokes of bondage, Father, bringing about healing, Father, in people's lives, Lord. We pray, Father, this morning, Lord, as you've shared your word with us, Father, Lord, we pray, Father, believing for all of these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, that was short. <laughs> Only one chapter. Thank you. <laughs>